Well, good morning. Um, so we're doing things a little different this morning. That's not obvious. I know uh, that the word Baptist is on the name of our church, and Baptists don't ever do anything different. So uh, for those of you who are like super Baptists, don't freak out here. We're going to do things a little bit different this morning. Um, and, and here's why. That, that song that we just sang is not just like lyrics. My testimony is not that apart from Jesus, my life was just meh, and then I met him, and it's better. It's, it's, it's way, way more contrasted than that. Apart from him, I was dead, and in him I've experienced life. And the more I grow in him, the more life I experience, and the more death I'm set free from. So it's both true that in Jesus we are raised from death to life, and it's true that as we walk with Jesus, we walk in newness of life. Like it's both an instant reality and a growing reality. And, and we want to leverage moments as a church to contend for life, to create space and opportunity for, for more life in Jesus. And uh, so this morning, uh, what we're going to do is kind of just look at this summer. What were some of the opportunities we created and where did we see him show up and do his thing and see some life? Um, this morning, our idea is just a summer recap. Um, that's part of the reason for my shirt this morning. Um, this is also my silent opposition to school starting here at Temple Christian School tomorrow. Like this is my spirit animal that I'm wearing here. Um, we, uh, we are still in vacation mode. But um, I will confess this. I don't always celebrate well. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you can relate to that. I'm one of those, what's next? Like let's get ahead of things. Let's not get blindsided by the stuff. I tend to be a more... Uh, of a thinking down the road kind of guy than a even present in the moment and for sure not necessarily looking backwards well. Can anybody else relate to that? Um, I struggle with that. The experts say that a church takes on the personality of their pastor after they've been there for five years. Um, this was my 15th summer here. So it's, I'm sorry if you're worse at that than you used to be. Maybe that's my fault. Uh, but as a church, I don't think we're always great at just stopping and celebrating. And, um, and so what we want to do this morning is stop and celebrate before we rush on. Um, one of the things we'll talk about actually next week is in June, um, a group of us went to the Dominican Republic. And uh, it was an adult trip, but my son Ethan came with us. And, um, and we were there our second day there. And I told him about an idea I had for our next trip to the Dominican. Uh, like, eight months away. And he looked at me like, you were the weirdest human. He said, it's day two and you're already talking about the next trip. Could you just please be present, right? Um, and so what we don't want to do is just rush to the next thing. We want to be present and talk about one of the things that God's done. And some of the stories we might share this morning, uh, for sure some of the specifics will be maybe new to those of you who do call this your church home. And you're like, I'm plugged in. I knew that event happened. I just didn't know that little thing happened. Uh, maybe you're a guest today and all of this will be uh, information to you. But a lot of you might not know that three of our young adults uh, served as interns this summer with Mana Worldwide, uh, specifically with a ministry of Mana Worldwide called Engage Camps. Um, our son, Garrett, and Natalie Baina and Ethan Harp, all three served together. Um, and uh, this is me. I got to hang out with them. I preached a camp with them this summer and uh, took them to uh, ice cream. So that's what we do. Uh, praise Jesus. So um, our son Garrett served last summer in this. Um, and then this summer we had three uh, of our young adults serving with them. And we're excited for that. So um, Garrett and Ethan are already back at college in Jacksonville, Florida at Trinity Baptist College. Um, and so they couldn't be here this morning for that testimony time. Uh, but I did ask Ethan uh, to please send us a little thought of his experience with that this summer. So our first testimony uh, this morning comes from a video. So let's watch that together. Hey, Temple family, this is Ethan Harp. For those of you who do not know me, I am the son of Nancy and Bill Harp. And today I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about what I did this summer. And what I did was travel with Engage Ministries. And we traveled throughout the whole summer um, to uh, several different states to preach the gospel to students and just spend time with them and introduce them into the gospel. And it was an incredible experience, very humbling, very powerful, because we got to pour into these students and tell them about God and show 
the love of God to them, which was just humbling. And, you know, you, no one deserves that, and especially me. Um, and not only that, but we also got to be poured into as well, which makes it even more beneficial. And as a matter of fact, when I was there, I actually surrendered to youth ministry. I felt God calling me to that. And never has that been a plan or a thought in my mind before that. So God is good and God was working this summer for sure. And none of that would have been possible without those who donated money to us and who sponsored uh, me specifically for this trip. So I just want to say a quick thank you to each and every single individual who contributed to that. And those of you who have been praying for us as well, we greatly appreciate it. And none of this would have been possible without you. So God bless y'all. Thank you. That's awesome. I love that he said, I'm the son of Bill and Nancy Harp and Liam. He just ignored that you existed. <laughs> so I will give you the shout out and say he's the also uh, older brother of Liam. So there you go. Uh, that's awesome. So I told you one of the other interns who traveled this summer is Natalie Baina. She's going to come up here and uh, uh, share a little bit this morning as well as uh, of how God spoke in her heart. And uh, so you guys give a welcome to Natalie as she comes up. <laughs> I think so. There you Hi. go. Awesome. All right. So when did you first consider doing an internship thing for the summer? I first heard about the internship at a luncheon that they did at Engage Camp. I went my senior year and I was actually a camper and they were hosting a luncheon and I decided that it would be interesting just to go and I got free Chick-fil-A. So I wasn't going to say no. <laughs> and so you ended up deciding to do that. What part of this experience for this summer would you say was the most impactful part? I'd say the most impactful thing for me was getting to serve. It was such a humbling experience to get to pour into students that really, for me, aren't that much younger than I am. And I was in that situation last year, and it was just really humbling. And not only did I get to pour out to them, I saw other students get to pour into each other, and that was also a humbling experience. Yeah, that's great. How did it push you outside of your comfort zone? It very much did push me out of my comfort zone in a lot of different ways. It challenged me physically, mentally, um, spiritually, and emotionally, honestly, in all those different ways. Um, but personally, I don't know about everybody else. I would say that I'm an introvert, and so having to be involved in all these different activities and talking to people and being upbeat all the time, it really drained me, but it was such a good experience, and I wouldn't trade that for my summer back. Yeah, that's awesome. And as an introvert here, you're sitting up in front of your church family. Mm -hmm. So how cool is that, right? So, real talk, what was the hardest part? Probably, for me, the hardest part was the bus drives and <laughs> really trying to connect with people just because I'm not a person that will go up to somebody and start a conversation like Doug. So. <laughs> I feel like I just got caught out. So if you don't, just for context, so they would do a week of camp, which is those of you who've done good old church camp, summer camp, right? There's not a lot of sleeping, you know? And then they would break everything down, pile into a bus and drive halfway across the country and do another week. And then, and some of their travel this summer, apparently, um, apparently the planners don't own a map because uh, they, it, it wasn't necessarily even logical travel. Uh, it was just kind of everywhere. Um, so to somebody who would say, I sense God is calling me to something, but it's scary. It's way outside my comfort zone. What would you say to that person after having had this experience this summer? I would definitely say to pray about everything that you do and decide whether or not that's something that you are ready to do. But it's such a good experience and it's, it's scary. Out of your comfort zone, being out of your comfort zone is a scary thing, and we don't like change, but in order for change to happen, you need to be proactive and get out of your comfort zone, and to have change, you need to be the change, and 
that was really something that I had to set aside was my fear and anxiety about the whole thing and to just surrender it to God and really humble myself before him and say, this is not for me. This is, I'm serving and he's going to speak through me so I shouldn't be nervous about anything that I have to do. Amen. So in closing, what, what would you like to say to those who helped sponsor you to be able to serve as an intern this summer? Definitely, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you so much for being grateful in that way and being generous. And I couldn't do this without you guys. And I am so thankful that the Lord put it on your heart to donate because I would have never experienced this improvement in my life if you guys hadn't had that generosity. So thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> they, uh, they started out at Camp Chautauqua in Ohio with kind of their training, and then they went to uh, John Brown University in Arkansas, and then their second week of camp uh, was, was Engage Camp Texas at SAGU, uh, which is Temple Student Ministry, went to Engage Camp in Texas. And so um, we were excited to take a, a, it's the largest group of students in my 15 summers here. Uh, I don't know, this church is a lot older than me, so I don't know, you know, maybe we've taken a lot more in years past, but man, in recent history, uh, it's, it's the most students that we've taken. So we've got a good group picture here of some of the students uh, who went with us and uh, saw God work. And that's actually their serious pose. Uh, <laughs> you should see the goofy one. Um, so we're, we're thrilled with, with how God spoke in their, light, uh, in their life. And so uh, we asked one of our students to, to share. I'm going to ask Catherine Galato to come on up and uh, ask you guys to give her a warm welcome. As of 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, Catherine is a senior at Temple Christian School and a uh, multi-sport athlete. And, um, and so I'm excited to hear kind of how God uh, spoke to her. So the question is, um, what was one of the moments, like let's zero in on a story. What's one of the moments from camp um, that really impacted you? Yeah, so, hello. Oh, I think we're off. Here we go. And now it's is it on? Okay. So um, we were at one of the nightly sermons, and the pastor was talking about control. And I had my notes, like, right in front of me. And I normally write everything down on my notes, but um, I just felt like I needed to write something down about control. But I, like, didn't feel like it was right to write it down on my notebook so I just like felt like I had to take my friend's hand, Lily, who was sitting right next to me, and I just wrote, give up control on her hand. And yeah. Yeah. So, which is weird. Like, I don't, you don't normally just yeah. write on people randomly, right? No. This is a unique experience, just for context, in case you were curious. Uh, that's not normally what she does. So then what did you find out later in small group time when Lily shared about her perspective of that moment? Yeah, so... Um, Later, we were all just chatting, and um, Lily mentions that she had been struggling with her future, and um, she was, like, in the sermon, and she was praying to God, and she was, like, fighting over whether, like, what to do with her future, and if she just wants to live the simple life, um, and she was asking God, like, give me a sign, and at the exact moment that she was asking God to give her a sign was when I wrote down, give up control on her hand. So. And so what does that moment teach you about God? Oh, man. Um, that moment taught me that God is always speaking to us, even when we don't realize it. And... Sometimes he's even speaking through us and we don't even realize it. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Man, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, so what, what do you want us to take away from hearing that amazing story about that moment with you and Lily? What do you hope we take away from hearing that story? Um, I hope that y'all take away that God speaks to 
like all of us. And it's not that he speaks more loudly like at church camp and places like that, but that that's the times that we're listening more closely. Mm. So. Amen to that, yeah, <laughs> that's good. All right, thank you, Catherine. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. And I want to second that motion. Like, I, I'm a believer in the idea of youth camp because uh, we listen louder, right? Uh, author Mark Batterson said, change of place plus change of pace can equal change of perspective. And that, that whole idea of student camp is just that maybe the volume gets turned down on the routine so that we can hear not the God who started speaking, but who's always been speaking. And maybe today, um, you walked in with a lot of white noise. Um, and I, I just want you to know, I believe in a God who's always speaking to us. And so, um, praise God that moments like that grow our faith, uh, that maybe we would listen a little closer. Another perspective of camp that, that I would ask this morning is I'm gonna ask Stephanie Cochran to come up and she's gonna share uh, a bit of her perspective as one of the leaders who came. And so you guys welcome Stephanie as she comes and shares her heart. So um, I'm married to Trevor and we help lead the worship and student ministries here at Temple. And so that means we go to teen camp and I love camp. I've been attending camp since I was seven, serving in some capacity at camp since I was 12. Trevor and I've been taking students to camp for many years. And one of the things that's a little different as an adult taking students to camp is it's easy to feel the pressure of being the leader. And we only have, you know, we only have so many nights, we have only four nights at camp, we wanna make the most of our time, we wanna make sure we have as many gospel conversations as we need to have. And it's like, oh, I gotta be, you know, all these places and get all this stuff done. And before you know it, I'm feeling just a lot more important than I actually am. Um, and you've already heard some amazing camp stories. Students, deciding for the first time, I'm going to trust Jesus enough to follow him, or students surrendering to missions or to ministry, just lives changed by the love of Jesus. And that's great. It was amazing to be there to see it. But the most amazing part of camp for me, and the thing that made Engage Camp 2023 different than all the other weeks of camp that I've done in my life, was how God accomplished all of this good work in the lives of our students, largely through their fellow students. Like every day, multiple times a day, I'd be headed off somewhere to be the leader only to discover that a student already had that covered. Thank you very much. <laughs> like um, one night, uh, during one of our worship services, I was headed to the front to pray over a student who had just gone to the altar. And before I could get to them, Bryce and Rife leads four or five of their peers over and they surround the student and start to pray for them. And I was like, oh, well, okay, I'll stand over here. Or another night, I was walking to the night game and as I'm walking, I'm, I'm praying and I'm planning, okay, I'm gonna, gonna grab this person, I know they're struggling, we're gonna sit off to the side while everybody plays the game and, and we're gonna talk about Jesus, have a gospel conversation. I get there and I'm looking for this person and I find them already sitting on the sideline, already talking about Jesus with Kat. And the, close to the end of the week, um, I finally got back to the dorm lobby after evening service and discussion time and the night game and I was super discouraged. I, um, I led the, our high school discussion time that we have every evening after the evening service for the whole week. And this particular night, there was one student who was visibly upset for the whole time. And so as I'm leading, my wheels are turning and I'm like, okay, when we get done, I'm gonna go straight over to you. We're gonna hash this out. We're gonna figure out what's going on. We're gonna talk about Jesus, it's gonna be great. Dismiss them, something happens, I get distracted, lose them in the crowd, like the moment's gone, as I don't get to talk to them. Go to the night game and I'm just like super, I've been praying for them all day. I've been asking God to give me an opportunity to talk to them and I'm just feeling like I'm the worst. And I get back to the lobby and hanging out with 
some of the other students and just kind of quiet. And after a while, it's getting close to curfew. And I go, hey, any of y'all seen so-and-so? You know where they are? And someone goes, oh, yeah, they're still back in the main building where we have services. Ethan's talking to them. And like, I could, there's not enough time for me to tell you every story, but it's not an exaggeration to say, this happened to me all day, every day of camp. It was like, as soon as the Spirit of God would make me aware of a need, there would be a student stepping in to fill that need. I've never, in all my weeks of camp, I've never felt less necessary. <laughs> in the best way possible because God has given our students a hunger for the gospel and an excitement for Jesus and they are taking that gospel to each other. It's incredible. And I, I just keep, like the last day of camp, this is just what I kept thinking all day and many days since then, I'm just so thankful that I get to be on the same team as them. And I got the incredible privilege of getting to watch that part of the team in action because this part of the team gave sacrificially so that no student missed out on camp because of finances. And for myself and on behalf of these students, I just want to honor that sacrifice and I want to thank you for your generosity and your faithfulness to the work of the gospel. We saw life change because of it. Thank you so much. I wasn't going to say this yet, but I'll, I'll say this here. This summer through sponsorships for the internships, sponsorships for Engage Camp, and sponsorships for Kids Camp, which we're going to talk about in just a minute, um, we saw historic generosity in the midst of a recession and people saying that, uh, that nonprofit giving is down everywhere and everybody's kind of complaining about it. And you guys just said, oh, really? Watch this. Uh, and so I, I, I do just want to honor that sincerely. And, and I would say this about, uh, specifically about Temple Student Ministry. Our, our youth leaders are not common. Uh, God has really blessed us for our size of a church. Um, among our student leader team, um, 10 of them are Bible college graduates. Um, it would be easy for our leaders to say, we're going to be very controlling. We got this. We have some training and we have some education in this. And I just honor the fact that their desire is to watch students flourish in, in leadership and grow and take ownership of their own. And I praise God for that. Kids camp was a week and a half after Engage camp. Um, uh, and our, our students went ready, set, go was the, the theme at kids camp this year. And uh, this summer, Kathy Wrench went uh, with kids camp and yeah. So if, if you're a guest today, you might not know Kathy's the OG around here. Um, not the original gangster, she's the original grandmother, right? Um, and so we were thrilled uh, that she went and served at camp. And so Kathy, you come and share a testimony with us. I put my cheaters on because I'm a grandma. Okay. <laughs> so let me start by telling you that I did kids camp for over 25 years before I retired at 65. Excuse me, I need to get the mic up here. Uh, well, when I got back from the Dominican trip, I got a text from Marisa and it says, are you awake? And I thought, oh, please don't ask me to come to work today. <laughs> but I said, yes, and she immediately called me and she said, would you like to go to kids camp? I said, yes. I was so excited to be at kids camp this summer. Uh, it was such a blessing to go with that group, watching Jace and Ethan interact with those kids and enjoy those kids. It was phenomenal. I had so much fun watching them. Uh, Ethan, Ethan drove the golf cart one day, <laughs> and he, he had a fun time driving that. <laughs> uh, I rode with Nikki and, and uh, Hunter most of the time. Hunter gave me good rides. <laughs> Nikki, not so much. We, we may have 
passed the speed limit a time or two with Hunter, but that was okay. I was squealing and having fun. <laughs> so, but I did see God each day watching your kids worship. If you know me, you know music speaks to my soul. And I saw music speak to your kid's soul. I just wish you could be there one night and watch them praise Jesus. I, it, it's just phenomenal watching them. And I enjoyed it so much. I have to tell you about Maddox. Maddox has a heart of gold. He came up to me in the dorm and he said, Miss Ranch, I just want to see you do the obstacle course in the lake. <laughs> and I, I looked at him and I said, well, Maddox, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but he had high hopes. I'm glad he thought I could. So, um, I did do an obstacle course in the cafeteria. It didn't go well. So, <laughs> if you sponsored a kid or if you sacrificed to send your own kid, you have made investments in the kingdom of heaven. You will never know what you have done for those kids. They heard the word of God every day through the games and activities. Everything they did was pointing to Jesus. And I can't express to you how much it meant for you to do that. Please send your kids to camp when it's their turn. Good job, Jax. We got you. We got you back. So if you're a guest today, you might think, wow, the theme is this church really likes to send their kids away. <laughs> but we don't just want to send our kids away. We also want to welcome this entire community here to hear that same word of God and ex experience the same presence of God. And so uh, every single summer, uh, one of our, our biggest events is VBS. And so uh, I've asked Marisa to come and share. Th by the way, this whole idea of doing this this morning was her idea. And I said, well, then that means you have to share. And so uh, Marisa is going to share about VBS. All right. <clears throat> Just a side note on camp. Those of us that got to go as leaders will never forget worshiping with this lady at camp. So, yeah, I am not the original grandmother, so that's good. Don't call me that after church. <laughs> so we've already mentioned uh, VBS a few weeks ago, um, and so you might be thinking, why is VBS such a big deal around here? Why, why was it such a win, or why do we put so much effort on it? Um, a week or two before VBS, Pastor Brian Loveless was here speaking. And he um, was here for, I'm assuming, the announcement maybe that uh, Nikki or someone made about VBS. And he commented later in the week to Doug, your church cheered for VBS when it was announced. Like, they are excited. Your church is all in to VBS. And what a testimony. What, what an awesome thing for a visiting pastor to, to notice. Um, and that he said, that really makes a statement about your culture and your church here. So what, why was it such a win? Or what's our why with VBS? I have just a few points. They're not alliterated, but here we go. Um, we are super serious about proclaiming the gospel to the next generation. Um, the, the, that's, that's why we do everything that we do, but especially VBS. And our community, I don't know, those of you that maybe just come on Sundays, our community looks forward to this week. We hear it. We hear people. I get messages personally on Facebook. Um, when is VBS? When is it coming? We're checking the website. Um, they're looking forward to it. Um, True at Cochran woke up at 6.05 on Sunday morning, the, the morning of VBS. Is it VBS day? It's VBS day. We're going to VBS at 6.05 in the morning. He was ready to go. I got to witness a little guy come uh, through the lobby that morning, the first time that he had seen the decorations in the foyer. And he was just like, wow. I mean, literally, that's what he did. Wow. Like Disney World or something. And he was so excited. We have a family um, down the hill, Temple Days, that's moving 
It's going to be about 45 minutes away, and they are just heartbroken to be leaving the temple community, um, and it's too far of a drive to come daily, but this little guy has made his mama promise that he will get to come back for VBS every year. She told me that this week, and I knew I was sharing this. He's in first grade. That's our why. That's a win. These kids will remember these things. Um, it's a great opportunity for connection. Um, if you served in VBS and you were somewhat new here, I guarantee you, I could ask you, did you meet somebody that you didn't know before? And you would say yes. You see them on Sundays and you're now connected. You're linked arms doing something together. Benefit from serving is connection. We get to know one another better. We had a family <clears throat> visit and she said, she told us, she said, I don't want to leave. I feel so welcomed here. There's something here. It's so warm and inviting and she didn't leave. She stayed every night, all night long. She listened into a story twice one night because it was so good. She wanted to hear it again. That's a testimony to our volunteers and to our serving and our connection in our culture here. Um, our influence in the world, not just on the Hill, not just in Fort Worth, not just at Temple Christian School or our ministries here, but uh, last summer, many of you remember we raised money for New Jerusalem, the school at New Jerusalem. And some of you will hear a little more next week about the Dominican. You stood this summer exactly where you saw tangible results of what we gave last summer through BBS. And so this year we raised more than $4,500 in a kid's offering up here. Thank you. Yes. Um, $4,500 to go to a place of hope. They have a special needs home um, and it was desperately needing some renovations. So our influence around the world is a, is a ministry of our BBS and that's a huge win. Um, another win, we never phase out of serving here. Um, there's a job for everyone. I think I have a picture here um, from, from sixth grade, uh, first time serving. They're not a participant anymore. They helped with crafts or whatever. To our young adult ministry, we had several single adults here serving all the way, that's right, <laughs> all the way through some of our retired families greeting um, Debbie Childs browning up hamburger meat in the afternoons at, for tacos. There was a job for everybody, and that's, that's you didn't phase out of it. Um, every generation had a role, and that's beautiful. Like, you're never too old to serve in BBS. So, um, the next one was families serving together, and this one would be easy to miss. Um, we just all do our thing, and we all come, and we uh, serve. No big deal, but this is, this is huge. Doug mentions all the time about students, and we see it. You might have been one but at one time, and now you're back. Students that walk away from church after high school, they're done. They think they've phased out of it, or they're not, they don't need to be a part of it. Um, and one of the critical things with this, we, profile, we profoundly increase the chances of their faith sticking and them continuing to be connected with our church or with the church, with the gospel, when families serve together. And so we had, we just had so many, uh, so many families serving. You can see there on the picture, um, some families that have phased out of VBS. Wilson Flory does not have a child. He's the original grandpa, right? <laughs> he does not have a child in VBS. But watching him down here in this little square with the kinder and first grade boys, trying to do the Zumba-like dance moves <laughs> with Jace to his right and Jack's up here in the front leading. That's what it's all about. We had two mom and daughter teams in the story time and a father and son in there working, teaching the gospel, teaching how we follow Jesus here, there, and everywhere. Uh, the Bible memory games, th th that's what it's all about, serving with your families. Um, so that's a win. Lastly, all this matters because we want to come along beside families and help them disciple their families. Um, we aren't called to do that for your family. We are called to come along beside you and support you and encourage you and cheer you on. And so today is our official promotion Sunday. So our kinders have moved into elementary 
Temple kids and our fifth graders, exiting fifth graders, have moved into TSM today as official as the first week. That's right, clapping down here, yes. Um, so uh, officially joining TSM. And so this is, a, I know he mentioned TSM, but this is like a shameless plug for TSM. If you're a parent... These leaders love on these kids. They disciple them. They pour into them. Um, get your kids here. Be here. Let these, let these leaders disciple them. Let these students lead them, as you heard from Stephanie. Um, it's just we have seen in our own lives the things that our boys have gone to leaders about, and they've just come along beside us and supported us and helped us with that. So please support our TSMers and to support being here on Wednesday nights. So um, to celebrate all of this, we're going to have popsicles after church today in the cafeteria. If you have littles, go grab your kids from everywhere and then head to the cafe for popsicles. If you don't have littles, go get a popsicle and hang out with the people that do. Rub shoulders with them. Um, get to know their name, love on their littles. They will love that, I promise. Um, and also, we're, we're all back in back to school I know, I know, I hear it. I'm with you. Um, we're all in back to school. Some parents are clapping over here. <laughs> we're excited. Um, so we're all entering a new phase. And so after uh, church today, after the service is over, we are going to have someone at the back table back here. And we have some resources, some tools to put in your hands. These books are an excellent tool. Um, this one is Parenting Your 11th Grader. I happen to have one of those. So... That's why I grabbed it. But it's a guide to making the most of the phase your child is in. And so we have a stack of books for every age, all the way um, parenting your newborn, parenting your one-year-old, all the way through parenting your senior. Um, and so it's like a journal questions, but it's going to help guide you through the next year with your child um, physically, emotionally, but most important. Uh, spiritually. So those are $10. There'll be someone in the back today if you'd like to stop by. And as always, if $10 is too much, if you can't swing that, or if you need three of them and you can't swing 30, talk to us. We can help sponsor that. So those of you that served, participated, gave, whatever you did for VBS, thank you. Thank you so much. And when you start seeing the QR code flash up next year for serving, if you missed out and you're thinking, man, that doesn't sound so bad, I think I could come be a part of that. Y'all be sure and sign up next year. So thank you. As tends to be the case in our roles in life, she usually says things nicer and I say things more bluntly. Um, and I, I just want to circle back and say a little more candidly, uh, our philosophy of ministry here at Temple is we do not believe that the role of the local church is to disciple the children of believers. That's not our calling. The, the goal of Temple Christian School is not to disciple believers' kids. That's not our mission at Temple Days. It is to be a tool, a resource, and accountability to believers to help them disciple their kids. And so things like these phase books are just a simple resource that we're trying to make available to you, um, which by the way, these are always uh, in the prayer room. You can always find these books there and other parenting books because we believe God didn't make a mistake when he gave those kiddos to you. We believe in you because he believes in you. And so we want to come alongside that and cheer you with that. And I'm glad for you that you have Marisa over Temple Kids to help you with that because she's been helping me disciple kids for 19 and a half years and, and she's a great partner in that. Um, and you've watched her role change some. Those of you who've been with us for the last 14 and a half years, you've watched um, when we first got here, we had little ones. Matter of fact, not long after we got here, we had a newborn, right? And um, how God's, uh, as our kids have gotten older, um, that she stepped into uh, leadership at Temple Days and with Temple Kids. And you guys already know this, but I just want to say out loud this morning, I know I can't do this without her. <laughs> That's all. I'm done. I'm going to cry. Um, I was going to say this too. Um, let me circle back and just say, Kathy kind of made a joke about her obstacle course. I want to say two things about that. Maddox, we all want to see her do that obstacle course. I would pay good money for the video of that. Um, the second thing I would say is the obstacle course that she uh, made a joke about is she had, she had a pretty nasty fall at camp 
And I only mention that to say she has surgery in a couple days. Uh, and so I'm asking that you'd pray that that surgery would go well and that her recovery would go smoothly. Uh, she literally sacrificed her body for the sake of the next generation. <laughs> and so let's be praying strong for her, okay? Um, something that you might not know is uh, the morning after VBS ended, um, a group of us got on a plane and headed to Guatemala. Um, part of our new requirements as part of community service to graduate from Temple Christian School um, is that our students would go on a mission trip, either foreign or domestic, uh, would go on a mission trip. And the theme of the trip that we took was the phrase, lead by example, because we had several administrators who'd not ever been on a missions trip um, or maybe hadn't been in one in a really long time. And so we wanted to lead by example. If we're gonna tell students, listen, be courageous and go to the nations for the sake of your growth in Christ, then we're gonna lead in that way. And so um, we took our administrators, our partnership with Mana Worldwide, um, and we went to Guatemala. And then we also, in the mornings, we did uh, what we call soul care sessions. Uh, a lot of you guys know I do a lot of retreats uh, throughout the year with pastors and missionaries and ministry leaders, uh, but we'd never done that with our own team. And so uh, our TCS administrative staff went and did that. Um, and I want one of those administrators to come this morning. Kelly Joe, if you would come on up. Kelly Joe Smith. serves as our Director of Admissions and Development, and she is the English Department Chair. And so sometimes I use bad grammar on stage just to bug her. It's great. Yes. Um, and so what, let me ask you, had you ever been on a missions trip before internationally? Absolutely not. I had no desire to go. Yes. It was not my thing, and I'd always told God, I'm good here. Yeah. Uh, you born and raised in Texas, and here's my mission field. Yeah. And I was happy with that. So what were your hesitations? All of it. Um, we had gotten together at, at Doug's house, and it was exactly, you know, hindsight, but it was exactly as he had said it would be. But in that, I think the hesitations began, um, and they were so shallow, but at the time, they were so big. Um, so I'll just be honest. One was, the, remember, shallow. Um, when they said it's going to be humid and it's going to be hot. Oh, by the way, there's no air conditioning. And so I thought, and maybe not in the car, but not in the hotel, not in the stores. Not, there is no air conditioning. So, of course, your mind thinks things like, how am I going to get a good night's sleep? I'm, you know, I'm old. I need to. Well, maybe not everybody thought that. I did. Um, and then you think things like, what if I'm kidnapped? And, you know, then, of course, people joke and say, well, they'd bring you back. And, but you, your mind just begins to race. And so, of course, we were told there are some that are level 10, but this is a mission trip that's like a level 0.5. Um, and then he mentioned we'd have to eat at McDonald's, and then we were level nine. Um, but it was just the things that you let your mind get away from you, from the unknown, those all became hesitations and yeah. fear. Yeah. And so you got on the plane. I did. And, and you went. <laughs> and so how were you impacted? Everywhere we went, um, you began to realize that maybe there's more American in me than Christianity mm -hmm. because, boy, did you realize how spoiled we are. Um, for instance, we had gone to a bakery where there was a single mom being taught not, not only how to read uh, but how to cook. And she would take the things that she cooked and she would go out into the community and she would sell those items. And she's a single mother of two. Her main way of providing for her children at night for dinner was through a microwave, which I'll admit, that's a really great resource when school begins. Mm -hmm. But it's usually easier to take your grilled chicken and microwave it. But if that's all you have, that's a limitation. And um, she was so excited when they brought her a stove. Most women, we would be like, that was my gift as a stove. Um, but they brought her a new stove, and she was excited. Then another lady comes along who is a single mother of seven, and she realized that she didn't really need that stove. So she gave it to that family because she had a microwave, and that was plenty. And so, boy, it just hits you that 
we get a new stove and then we ask somebody, would you like my old one? Um, and then we feel good about ourselves, but she mm. gave her best mm. and she was thrilled about it. Yeah. So to somebody who shares some of those same fears or hesitations, we talk a lot about mission ships here around here. We, one of the things I say is if you are physically able, not financially able, God will take care of that. Mm -hmm. If you're physically able to go on a mission ship, you should go on a mission ship. So to somebody who hears that and goes, oh, here's all the list of reasons why I'm not that person. <laughs> what would you say to them after having experienced that? Well, I thought I wasn't that person either. Um, and I was okay with that. But the blessing that you miss out on, um, the hesitation isn't the Lord. He doesn't deal with us like that. Mm. He doesn't say, I'm going to prepare you by scaring you so badly you'll be ready. It's that still small voice where really I, I wish in hindsight I could have just had myself focus on, Lord, I'm so excited to see what you're going to do. Mm. Instead of hearing the enemy try to rile me up and say, what if, what if, what if? And by the way, none of those what ifs mattered. In fact, the, the no air conditioning, um, I roomed with one of the other administrators and she and I in the morning would open up our door to the balcony and this cool breeze would sweep through to the point that we were wearing our sweatshirts. And then it was like, okay, I got it, God, thank you. I, I see that. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. Don't let that, that hesitation and that fear is not the Lord speaking to you to not have you go. The Lord doesn't do that. His, if you're not supposed to go, that still small voice will give you that peace. But look for the Lord and be excited about what he's going to show you and what he's going to do. So having experienced this now and seeing our, our goal and our hope of getting students to be exposed to the same thing, what are your hopes for future trips for our students now that you've experienced it? For my hope for our kiddos, um, which it's so sweet to see y'all. I know you're all excited about school tomorrow just to see your friends though. Um, <laughs> my hope is that our kids would see who the Lord is, that everything that we pour in in those Bible, you know, verses and the biblical worldview that we do in the classroom is that he would become real, not just somebody on paper, but he would become so real and intimate with you and have the realization to know that he's enough. Yeah. Not him plus all the American stuff, but that he is simply enough, period. Mm -hmm. That'll preach. Well, give me a minute. Okay, no. <laughs> we know better than that. That's why we're doing an interview, not a testimony. You notice that, right? I would slap <laughs> him, but he speaks the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that you wanted to talk about the soul care sessions that we did. Mm. Um, what, what would you want to say about that? Well, I have, in the 33 years that I've taught, um, I started when I was 12. So don't do the math. But in the 33 years where I've taught, I've been in two public schools and three private. And this is the, the third private Christian, all Christian. Um, it was really wonderful to know that it was important to the, the president of the school board, our pastor, and then our head of schools, Neil, that our administration not only lead by example, but that we every single day took the time to seek out the Father. We would open the word of God. We would sing. Um, we would, you know, it, you know, of course, I tried not to sit next to Julie so I didn't sound bad. Um, but Doug would lead us into, you know, the word of God where we talked about abiding in him and just resting in him. And to be able to sit amongst a group of leaders who realize that this isn't our school that we're just the ones that God picked up and put here for such a time as this. It was profound to sit next to a friend and a colleague and get in the word of God so we can take it back to our teachers and our students. Um, you don't see that in a lot of Christian schools and, and that was unbelievably wonderful to see that leadership. And do you have a takeaway from that time together you would wanna share? You know, when, when you think about, I, I, I remember we were eating dinner. It was, it was our last night. We were eating dinner. And, and Doug got up and kind of told us, you know, let's remember tomorrow we go home. 
Um, but let's keep this thought process abiding in him, resting in him. And then, as only I can do, I decided to be kind of snarky, and I said, no, that's not necessary. Okay. Um, <laughs> this guy. Um, but I had decided to say something along the lines of, oh, well, if we could only do that at work, you know, but our boss, um, <laughs> which is Neil, and... Um, <laughs> So he sat up and, and said, let me just say this. And he, was, he had a serious, serious face on. Not his serious joking face, but his serious, serious face. And he said, and it was such a, a relief to, to get this kind of permission. But he said, I'm giving you permission to the administration to not only do I want you to abide and take time, but I'm telling you, you have the permission to go into your office and shut that door and spend time with the Lord because the point isn't for us to become so overwhelmed that we're working in the flesh, but that we're abiding constantly so that he can do his will through us and we just step aside. But to have the leader of our school be able to say that and, and you know that it wasn't something that he's like, <laughs> wink, but it was really, this is the expectation. I give you that permission what a, what a great way to lead. What a great example. And it, it made all, the rest of us just rest in the Father and rest knowing that it's not us. It's not what I can or can't do. Right. But it's what I can do to move aside to let him work through me for his good will and pleasure. Amen. Yeah. And that's what we're praying for this school year. So thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So quickly, let me just share this. Um, one of the things that, as, as we talked about this summer and what we should or shouldn't include in this, um, some of our team felt like it was important for me to mention, because um, you might not know this, um, since my brother, uh, if you don't know the story, I, I lost my brother, who was a pastor. Um, I lost my brother to suicide in 2011 uh, as I was serving here on staff. And since then, um, God has, has stuck me in the lives of other ministry leaders um, in some of, of their darkest moments in, in a, a strange way. Um, and I, I do a lot of these retreats. I, I travel a lot throughout the year. And then I travel a lot uh, during the summer speaking at student camps. And um, a lot of times you guys don't even know that I'm gone necessarily. Um, but yet there's a bunch of you that I know are praying for those moments. And I just believe this church is gonna share in that harvest one day. And this summer um, w was no different. I, I don't know, I, I thought about adding up how many sermons I preached this summer, I don't know. I know the month of July it was 27. I, I, I didn't go back and do Junes because I was too tired by the time I got to 27 uh, in July. And, and so I, I just wanna say this, um, Lance uses the phrase, our church is generous with me. And, and my time. And I, I would say we have an incredible staff. That's the only reason that's possible. Um, but the fact is walking through the loss of my brother in 2011 was not a personal journey or even a family journey. It was a journey with this church body. And God keeps bearing fruit out of that. And you are part of that. And I'm so grateful. Um, this summer was uncommon in regards to fruit. Um, it, it, it was a weird summer. I preached some sermons I'd preached before, and for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit just decided to move in a different way than he did before. Um, we saw hundreds and hundreds of students saved this summer. Um, and that does not get old. And I will keep packing a suitcase and getting on a plane to go do that until God closes that door. Um, and so thank you for those of you who are part of that and who, who pray for that and who stand in the gap for that. And thank you to our team for leading so well um, while I am racking up American Airlines miles. So um, I want to share a very quick thought. I'm aware of what time it is, um, I, I, but I want to share this. This is important. If you've been to our Discovery Lunch and you've heard this, we try to reference this text at least once a year. This is our once a year. Deuteronomy chapter 6 is... Um, it's the most prayed prayer in the world today in 2023. This prayer is prayed multiple times a day throughout the world. 
It's also for us a foundational text here. It begins with this, hear, O Israel. The word hear is the Hebrew word Shema. So maybe you've heard this called the Shema before. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our God. Yahweh is one. That was a radical statement at the time. At the time, the idea of just believing in one God meant you were just lazy or something. Like you're not trying hard enough. Every civilization that we know of in human history at the time that this prayer was first prayed had a God for everything, right? As a matter of fact, I started to think about what would be the gods that Texans would have if we were polytheistic, right? We would have the barbecue God and the rodeo God and the college football God. And that sounds ridiculous, right? Some of you were like, no, my smoker wouldn't start and I really did pray. Yeah. Um, that was the mentality of the time. And so to declare that there's one God, the, the language we wrap around that is to know God, to experience that there's none like him. It, it's to know God, both in the introductory way, to be born again, to give your life to Jesus and know him, but also to grow in the knowledge of him because none of us actually know him. And so both to know him and to be knowing him is this idea that Yahweh is one. But to know him is to love him. You shall love Yahweh your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. This is with all of us. That's the Hebrew concept of the whole person is what that is right there. To love God with everything. Mark Batterson said, if you don't love God, you don't know God. Because we cannot grow to know him more and not love him more. Because nothing's more lovely than the God of the Bible. And so our goal is not just that we as a church body will know God, but that we will love him. And not just that we will know him and love him personally, but that we will see a calling in that to make sure that people around us know him and love him as well. That starts at first at home because he says this, these things, these words I came in today shall be on your heart. And then what? You shall uh, teach them diligently to your children. That found, sounds like a, a big responsibility. I'm, I'm supposed to teach the knowledge of God and the holistic love of God to my kids. What a daunting task. How do I do that? And then he literally gives us a rubric for how simple this is. You shall talk of them, these commands. When you sit in your house, in a Hebrew home, you pretty much only sat down to break bread, to eat a meal. They didn't sit and watch TV or sit and scroll on their phones or even sit and scroll on a scroll. Uh, seldom did they sit apart from a meal time, and we do that. Often our meal time is throwing French fries in the back seat as we're driving 60 miles an hour down the road. But I would say to sit as a family and have spiritual conversations is holy. It is how we cultivate the knowledge of God and the love of God in the hearts of the next generation. Again, not having super deep theological conversations, but just talking about where did you see, where did you see God at work today? Or when they share a story that they're really passionate about, to ask them, well, what do you think God thinks about that? You shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, most of us don't walk to school or walk to work, we drive. And so for us, to walk by the way is to sit in traffic in the Metroplex and have conversations as we're going. These last two we're used to when you lie down and when you rise, that those last conversations in the day and those first conversations in the morning could be centered towards a knowable God and a lovable God. And then these last two verses seem really uncommon to us. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And we could talk a lot about what the historical context of all that meant. And I want to actually just stay simple this morning. Here's what that means. That our our homes would be visibly marked, observably marked as being Godward. That when someone saw our family units, they would see that we are orienting towards knowing God and loving God. And so in our context here at Temple, we would say to know God and to love God and to share God is our heart because we don't think that's just for our family. 
when it says, teach this to your children, this is spoken to a community. We read the, the Bible so individualistic today, but this was written to a community. And so uh, the other thing we would say is we connect with each other. As we are growing in the knowledge of God, the love of God, and the sharing of the story of God, we're doing that in community. We connect with one another as we do so. Um, we are excited to see that God would choose to reveal himself uh, to the next generation through our efforts and through our ministries. Um, but at the end of the day, this is not what we do as spectators, watching God do in other people's hearts and lives. I would ask you today, are you growing in the knowledge of God? Do you sense that he is cultivating a deeper love for him today? Are we sharing the story of God first in our home and then in our circle of influence? And are we connecting with one another as we do so?